right now. Darren. You know, Andre DuPont, the old Philadelphia Flyer tough guy, was nicknamed Moose. And you being a tough guy. Right. But in hockey, when I was younger, another player came across the middle and made the most devastating check I've ever made in my life. Take off the helmet, and it's a girl. And so the coach laughed at a boy, Moose, just like the Moose. And I'm like, I have no idea who that is, right? The one sports show where roughing is encouraged. How about that? <laughs> How about that, Rick Regan? Welcome. It's game day, baby. Yay. <laughs> the Scotia North Division getting ready to kick off uh, round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Today, Amanda Ruler. Hi. Welcome miss- welcome back. <laughs> I missed you so much. <laughs> I know. Me too. So, so much. When I came in, I gave him a big hug and embraced. And I just haven't seen you in forever. It's been way too long. That's the pandemic. I know. And it's and it's hard because you can't see people. And we're still in that part where we can't go to restaurants. Oh, and I know. I'm missing that. I know. That social interaction, those events, I really, I miss it. Well, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, and uh, good morning to you uh, on a game day. John Ohm, I'm not going to, I don't play with the toys like Rod does. <laughs> uh, in Paul, we trust. Go Jets, go on a Jets game day. Um, so we're good with Paul Maurice today. I mean, three weeks ago, we weren't good with him, but we're good with him today. Uh, John's got the blue hair on. If you got a blue hair on, uh, text the picture to the Prairie Mobile text line, 306-840-8777. Show us your game day morning, whether you're an Oilers fan, whether you're a Jets fan, whether you're a Habs or Leafs fan that's frustrated because you got to wait another day before the playoffs start. Uh, Jay is watching or listening from Winnipeg. Go Jets. I got my Jets shirt on. Uh, but hey, to be fair, and Dustin Nielsen's coming on today. We do have the Oilers swag. We'll get the cup right out front. So we got some Oilers represented here as well. Jacques Dupuis says, go Edmonton, go. Coach is watching our friend Drew from the Off the Hustle podcast and the newest head coach of the Pilot Butte Storm, Junior B, by the way. Congrats, Drew. On that, he's watching this morning. And uh, Wayne on Facebook, looking forward to the big game tonight between the Oilers and the Jets. I know you probably haven't watched a lot of the playoffs, but are you excited at least that it's oh, playoff yeah. time? Oh, my gosh. I'm excited for all sports right now because it's been so long and I've been craving a lot of it. So it's an exciting time. Okay. Have you, have you seen the crowds in the U.S.? A little bit, and it's making me kind of craving to go to an event and a little, can I say jealous? I know. Because I can't be there. And and that's what I thrive on is I love being in events. And you guys know that I I do host, I do game day hosting. So I thrive off that energy and I wish I could be there. So that's my stance. (laughs) I know. I know. Um, Can't wait. Can't wait. So uh, good morning to everybody. I know Jennifer, we put this here because I know you were going to watch today. So we made sure we got the Oilers uh, right up front. And uh, I'm not a Jets or an Oilers fan, but I got the gear. It looks really great. So uh, it's game day. We're really, really excited. But Mm -hmm. we're going to get to that today because on the program, we've got Alan May uh, joining us. He'll he'll be here to recap the Capitals and Bruins and update us on that series that maybe we're not paying as as close of attention to as we're we're going to with these uh, games in the North. Dustin Nielsen from TSN Radio in Edmonton. He'll be along here in uh, early hour two. And uh, Josh Donnelly from the U of R Rams will be by to talk a little U Sports football and see where where they're at. So that will be great. Dustin will help us uh, break this down. And uh, I believe, um, is it Reynolds or Jamie Thomas tomorrow, Clark? Yeah, Sean Reynolds uh, will be by to break down this game tomorrow morning. So that will be great. But uh, let's go to the quick six show topics because there's more than hockey this morning, Jordan. (laughs) Much more than hockey. Number one, uh, Jets Oilers game day. We'll get to that. Point two, NHL playoffs recap. Tampa, Pittsburgh, Vegas, all winning last night. Um, That was awesome. Um, That Tampa and Florida series has been so good. And Tampa's so opportunistic. Um, their ability to just, you know, be hemmed in their zone. Florida will take it to them. They'll play well, control the boards, wear them down, and then all of a sudden, bang, two on one, you got to go. Or bang, pow, you know, break away to point. And they're so good on the special teams, but it's still a really tight series, and I see, I see it going a long ways. Um, 
And we'll get to these games a little deeper. So that was fun. And then watching the Vegas nightcap last night. I know Rod was watching that. Uh, we talked on the phone last night when it was still scoreless. Um, I was doing a, a podcast in St. Louis last night with, uh, with Joe Hamilton. And the, it was the uh, Crunch Time podcast. And so I went on that at the intermission of the uh, second period of the Tampa, Florida game. And I'm like, perfect, Joe. You <laughs> caught me in the intermission. It's great. I won't miss the third period. And of course, no, we went like an hour because we just collect like this we went an hour so when it was done I, I talked to Rod on the phone he's like you didn't miss anything Tampa won but it's still scoreless in the game the Vegas game so you're good that's my favorite thing about you is you can multitask well like no other sometimes <laughs> sometimes so that was cool and the game was fun um mini with with Dumba getting that shot to go up one nothing and then Marcia so scored back right away and then Chandler Sevison. Uh, had the, the, the clincher to make it 3-1. So that was really fun. Vegas is back in that series. So that's point two. Point three is the Bo Levi Mitchell comments yesterday. And I don't know if you saw these, but he was on with Bob McCowan and John Shannon on McCowan's podcast. Um, and he was talking about where the CFL needs to go and the direction it needs to go in. And it makes me, un- like I'm squirming in my chair. It makes me uncomfortable because Bo... Bo, we're singing from the same hymn book. Like, like when did we become like this? We're <laughs> like, this is not right. It's not right. Did you see the comments? I did. I sorry, I had read it on um, uh, three, on down, three down, three down nation. Yeah, yeah. three down nation. I checked it out, and that's exactly how I was feeling too. Yeah, exactly. So I understand where he's coming from, and it's so I think amazing to hear from someone inside the league saying that out loud it's almost like something that's almost taboo to say you know we need a new generation we need to appeal to a younger audience and this is something we've been saying for a really really long time they need to survive and everyone in this town needs it everyone in canada needs it how do we make that happen oh i know so to paraphrase and to summarize what bo levi said on the podcast you know he talked about an older generation of fans and a disconnect with the younger generation. He says, well, you know, going around Calgary, he sees, you know, one or two vehicles with the Calgary Stampeders logo on the window and it's all an older generation and no young people following the team. And, you know, he talked about what the NFL does well with the video games and the betting and on and on to engage a younger demographic. And the CFL is not doing that. And he says, you know, and, you know, we can't be scared of, joining the XFL or looking at other ways to grow the game. But he did say he loves the game and the hundred year history and everything else is wonderful. And he said, we need to protect the game, but we need to look at ways to grow. And if we keep doing what we've always done, we're going to stay the same. So I think that's, it's amazing, but Bo, we're on the same page. We're speaking the same language, Um, whether we like each other or not. And not that I, I don't have anything with Bo Rod does, but He's right. He's so right. And I know it is scary for a lot of these people that are in charge. I know it's an older generation. It's an all it's an all boys club. And that's why I want to push myself in the CFL to help make a change. Like even with social media, they could be utilizing Twitch more. And I know that sounds crazy, but the, in the NFL, there's a lot of NFL guys that are on Twitch streaming video games. And that is appealing to a younger crowd. And I know some people are asking, what is that? What's going on? What, yeah. is, what is Twitch? But that is the problem. We need to appeal to that younger crowd. TikTok, Twitch. We need to do something different. We need to get them out in the community a little bit more to help with um, fundraisers. Just more stuff. Yeah. And it needs to come from maybe a younger mind, a younger mindset. I hate to say that, guys, but that's my stance on it. I agree. And... Yeah, I mean, he's right. And those NFL players, they get to play themselves in a video game. They get to follow along on social media, the fantasy sports. So that's where Bo is going, and it's making news across the Canadian Football League where the players are at. Uh, Nicholas, watching on YouTube, where is Rod Peterson? Well, Rod is away this week. He'll be back Tuesday. We don't have a show Monday because of the long weekend. He's back on Tuesday. Rod is not on vacation. Rod is working on his other business, which is the recovery coaching side. If you don't know, Rod is a a sober coach and a a recovery coach, and he's working on uh, uh, upgrading a certification. He's in a conference, and that's happening every morning uh, throughout this week. So uh, 
he'll check in from time to time. And actually, it's not on my quick six. And I didn't even tell these guys. The ultra update, if we can, we're, we've got comments from Rod on this whole CFL news and everything that's going on that we're going to get to here in the quick six. We're going to have Rod's comments coming up a little later on in the Ultra Update. So stay tuned for that. We'll get some thoughts from Rod. Uh, Mike Blackbird's watching. Yes, Twitch is going to be the new platform for leagues, especially minor and amateur sports. You need to adapt. Absolutely. Um, but moving on, point four, Bob Young leftovers. If you remember yesterday, Bob Young, the, uh, the caretaker, the owner of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, coming out saying the CFL is going to play and guaranteeing that the Tiger Cats are going to play football this season. There's the tweet from yesterday from Bob Young. He said, even if the other teams aren't going to play, we are going to play. And my summary on that yesterday was, this looks a lot like Bob Young's going rogue. Like, yep. they were around the boardroom table, and, you know, we don't have a date, and we haven't released a schedule, although I'm sure that they have all seen versions of it. And you've got owners who want to play, like Bob Young, saying, we want to play. I'm ready to pay to play. Let's go. And they're like, well, we don't want to play. We're not consensus. There's no unanimous decision here. And it feels like Bob Young went rogue and said, fine, I'm going to social media. I want to play. So when they say we're not going to play and we finally cancel the season, I want you to know, Canadian football fans, that I love you and I wanted to play. And the Thai Cats wanted to play. So we're not the ones holding it back. That's how it felt to me. Because we know Bob Young loves the Canadian Football League. And he's such a great part of the Canadian Football League. But Mark um, Godey, and I hope I pronounced that right, he's the CEO of the Red Blacks, of the Ottawa Sports Group that owns the team. And he doubled down on the comment and said, we're with you. We're with you. We want to play too. So now we've got two. It only takes one. It takes one person to speak out and make it known because that's courage. That's brave to be able to go out there and put your opinion out there because not everybody's going to like it. Yeah. You no, know, you're absolutely right. And I just wanted to pull something else up here, but you've got two. Yeah. And Scott Moe, the premier of Saskatchewan, saying we may have full stadiums by the end of the summer. And then Craig Dickinson replying to the three down tweet saying, I believe we're going to play in August. Mm -hmm. You got three. You see, when we talk about this on a da daily basis, I know it feels sometimes negative, like we're piling on the Canadian Football League or, you know, when we're doubtful they're going to play. And you'll, you'll see in Rod's commentary coming up later on, you know, he still is on the belief that I'll believe it when I see it. And so will I. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to plan my summer around the Canadian Football League yet. But things change quickly, really quickly. And we don't live in the same world we lived in yesterday or two weeks ago or a month ago, right? And a month from now, things could look completely different, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to be turned a little bit by these owners, which I wouldn't have believed would ever be the case, right? We <laughs> kind of hammered on them a little bit, but they haven't played. So I think we've been fair, but now Bob Young, now Mark in Ottawa, that's two, Craig Dickinson, right? We haven't heard from Craig Reynolds on this, but Craig, but Craig Dickinson's three, mm -hmm. right? Who's going to be four? Four turns to five. Now you've got a majority. And then all of a sudden, and it's public pressure too, now we'll know the guys who are behind the scenes saying, we don't want to spend the money. We don't want to spend the money. We'll know them. And will the public pressure be enough for them to say, fine, I'll spend the money? The PR, will that be enough to say, fine, I'll spend the money? This just got really interesting over the last 24 hours. Exactly. Like, it's you, making me hopeful, to do, be honest. Do you think they'll play? Yeah, now I do. I mean, obviously I was questioning it and it's hard to work. So I work with a few of the CFL athletes and me just even asking them, like, what do you think? They have no idea. They have no idea. And that hurts me trying to help them. Sorry, I am a speed uh, coach and I help prepare some of the CFL athletes for the season. And how can I help them when they don't know if there's going to be a season? But stuff like this 
makes them more ho- hopeful and wanting to train and wanting to get better because, okay, now I can play. Now I'm not stuck in this limbo universe. And as an athlete, I have been stuck there as well. There's no competitions for me, especially no in-person competitions for me for Olympic lifting. But these guys, I really, really feel for them. There's a lack of motivation for training um, and it's hard to get them there and ready to go. But now people are saying, you know what, let's go. Let's make this happen. They are ready. They're like, you know what, let's amp it up. Let's, let's get return to play. Let's get going. Let's play. Man, they're fired up in the comments section too. John Ohm says, Bob, Bob Young, is a great owner for the CFL. He could single-handedly pay the bills in the CFL. But it, it's, it's, it's not a charity yet. But yes, Wayne Grolo, good for Bob Young. We need, we need more owners showing where they stand. You know, if he does it on his own, now Mark steps up. You got two, Craig, three. You start getting more and more guys on board. It works. If Bob says it, nobody backs him up. He's kind of going rogue against the group, and it doesn't come off that well. But, hey, this is starting to trend in the right direction, at least in the short term. But, hey, it still may go the other way. Uh, Jeff Kabilis in Winnipeg's really pumped that you're here, by the way, Amanda. He says, OMG. Awesome. It's Amanda. <laughs> Woohoo. So there you I'm go. I'm so happy to be back. Yeah, it's been so long since I've been on the show, and I really, really missed it. And I'm happy that I'm here and I'm able to be here in person. Because last time you had me talking about um, wrestling. Yes. Remember? WWE, yes. But on, I was at home, so I wasn't able to be here. That's right. Uh, what do we got here in the comments section? Um, Jeff the Stamps. I would say all points to that being the root of it at Leaps. Perhaps it's morphed into more. What's he talking about? I'm not really sure. I don't know. Um, Larry Dye. On Facebook says, let's go with a six team season. Well, that won't happen. It, it has to be all or nothing. Yeah. But we're starting to see things turn a little bit, and we'll see if the pressure continues to build on that. Lauren Smith, uh, the privately owned CFL teams have been wanting to play all along. The publicly owned teams have made the same commitments or haven't made the same commitments. I don't know. I might think it might be the opposite. Because the privately owned teams are the real businessmen. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones who don't really want to lose money. I would think, again, not being in those boardroom meetings, I really don't know. I know we're running out of time here in the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Um, point five, Montreal Canadiens allowing 2,500 fans in the building by May 28th. Next week, they're allowing 2,500 fans, which is about 12% of capacity of the, uh, of the arena, which is the biggest in the National Hockey League. That would be game six of the Leafs and, and Habs first round series, if they go that far. And it prompted a statement, um, which is point six by the Montreal Alouettes, at the Alouettes, uh, are very encouraged by the announcements made by the provincial government on Tuesday, which are uh, consequent with the ongoing discussions the organization has had with the public health officials these past weeks. Since the presence of a certain number of fans in the stands is essential for the Alouettes to return to play, today's announcement is a step in the right direction, con- considering that the team's first game in Montreal would most likely be in September. It goes without saying the organization is also extremely happy that youngsters will be able to practice their favorite team sport once again. That's from the Montreal Alouettes. 2,500 fans. That's big. That's huge. The Alouettes doubling down saying they're, they're playing supposedly in September. So that's a little sneak peek into the schedule. Man. There's a lot to chew on here, but we're out of time in the warm-up. Alan May is in next. We're back to hockey for a look back at last night's action in the National Hockey League. And we'll take a look back uh, on what's going on in the Capitals and Bruins series with Alan May. You're watching the Rod Peterson Show here on Rod's Week Off on Game Plus TV, Facebook, and YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.